Hi everyone, this is Nightfighter22 here. I hope you guys are all well. And today I'm going to show you a very amazing, absolutely fascinating chess game. This was by Polgar, uh, Judith Polgar versus Nigel Shorts uh, at the 1990s Grand Prix chess attack. So as you know, the 1990s uh, for chess, especially in the Grand Prix, very sort of attacking, a dynamic game of chess. As there we have players like Kasparov and uh, Shorts. You know, some very interesting players. And this is one of those games, those absolutely amazing games, which is, you know, really, really exciting and dynamic. You know, Polgar being the women's, you know, world chess champion and a grandmaster. Nigel Short being the best rated player um, in the UK. You're from my country. So definitely I have a lot of respect for both of these players and they're really at the top of their game. Okay, so I'm going to dive right into it here. We have a French defense with e4, e6, d4, d5. I'm not going to talk about the opening much, but if any of you would like to know more about this, I'll put a um, link right here uh, for any of you. Just go click that and you can go see the French defense. And we have here what's known as the Paulson variation. So Nigel goes ahead and moves his knight to the queen side. Knight back to e2. c5, c3. Knight out to c6. And f4. We have a little trade here. And in this position, this is actually really interesting. I would probably bet my money on, you know, 90% of the Grandmasters probably playing something like a move like Bishop to E7, A6, you know, something like that. Um, but here, Nigel Shaw goes for F5, you know. F5, exposing this diagonal. You know, possibly weakening his king side, but he doesn't care. He wants to go for an attack. And here we have some interesting pawn structure. So knight at f3, uh, knight across to b6. What Nigel Short is doing here is he's just occupying the outpost of, um, you know, possible outpost on c4. We see h3, which is odd because an, it's an indication that um, Polgar might not be castling, you know, kingside anyway. There's no real reason to play h, sorry, h3, yeah, as there's nothing really threatening g4, such as a bishop or a knight. You know, both the knights are over here, this bishop is blocked. But after bishop e7, it gets interesting because you notice the h4 square and you notice that there could be some play on here. And Polgar does make a mistake here. She plays pawn to g4, which I think is interesting because maybe she's thinking, oh, okay, if takes, takes, the rook and knight defend h4, everything's cool, and I can go ahead and attack on the king side. But by playing g4, Polgar definitely decides she's not going to castle, and that's what I love because... When players say, oh, I'm not going to castle, or even if the castle on the opposite side of the board, it's definitely going to be a very fun game. Bishop to h4, check, right in there. And you'll notice, you know, the queen is supporting this. So after the trade, queen takes h4, boom. What's Paula going to do? She can't defend. You know, if there was if there was something here, it would be, if there was like, you know, say another um, knight here, it would be pretty much be checkmate, you know, knight g3 and checkmate. Um, so she's got to go ahead and move the king up to d2. Queen to f2 now. Like, look at this. This game, you know, is probably played... These two people were definitely in the top 10, 15 chess players of their time when they're playing this match. Look at this. Polgar's just getting slaughtered by his king. Now, b3, you know, is possibly to try and get these pieces out. Definitely uh, the main purpose of this move, defending the knight from coming to c4 would check, which would be pretty nasty. But this leaves d4 undone. You know, knight takes d4 now. And, um... Polgar, Polgar can't recapture here because of the knight. You know, the knight is pinned to the king. King up to c3. This is the only way that Polgar could really stop this knight from doing any further damage. Queen f3. And the king drops back to b2. And now queen takes h1. So queen takes h1, taking the rook. But I think that Polgar felt, okay, this queen is less of a threat over here, and now I can go ahead and take this knight for free. Maybe that's what she was thinking. And it doesn't look too bad. If you sort of cover up that queen over there, um, you know, Polgar's position doesn't look too bad. So she can retain that queen, or possibly get a queen trade, and she'll be okay. Queen to h2. You know, Polgar's position is still bad. She's still being slaughtered by Nigel Short. She's up material as well. She's down material as well. Um, but it's getting better. King b1. And Short just goes ahead and castles. And after the moves a4, a5. 
Polgar goes ahead and plays rook to a2. You know, this is the only way she should be able to get the rook out. She's not going to move king, bishop, queen to try and get this rook out elsewhere. So she has to play um, king to a2. But if you look at Nigel Shaw's position from his perspective, other than the queen, there's not that much he can do. He can't really break in with the knight here. You know, this bishop's a bit limited. It can't really go anywhere. This knight controls these two squares for the... And the rooks are disconnected, and there's no really open files for them to go down. The bishop's blocking them from coming to the c file. So, queen to g3. And now, Polgar steps right on the fact that Nigel Short is um, attacking with his queen without any defense. So, queen goes across to c3. And now, g takes f5. And you notice after recapture, boom, Polgar has a passed pawn. Not only does she have a passed pawn... But she's got a pass pawn in her opponent's territory. You know, it's on the fifth rank already. Bishop to b2 now. So the queen is being attacked yet again. Nigel Short is wasting time. And after queen to c7, e6. Where's the attack? Where's the advantage now? Polgar has completely turned this position around by attacking Short's king whilst developing her own pieces. You know, every piece is contributing this bishop is stopping this knight and this bishop from developing effectively. This bishop is going to control this very important open file. This rook is clamping down on the king side. This queen still has a lot of movement. Rook to f6. You know, obviously this is to try and stop this passed pawn. Um, Nigel Shaw is obviously putting two attackers on it. You know, bishop takes, knight takes, rook takes. That's what his plan is. But here we see knight takes f5. And immediately there's another threat. Rook takes g7. That wins the queen immediately. Rook to g6 now. This has to be stopped. And bishop to e5 attacking the queen. And where's the queen going to go? Where's the queen going to go? It can't go to any of these squares. It's got to fall back even further. Back to d8. And now knight takes g7. I mean, really. To going from something like this. Sort of this position. You know, all the way to this amazing sort of position that we now have here. It's just incredible. D4. F5 now. This is attacking the rook. The only thing that Shaw can do is trade off the only pieces that they're in the attack. After bishop takes g2, what, you know, which of Shaw's pieces are actually doing the work here? This bishop is doing absolutely nothing. It's blocked in by this pawn. This queen, where can it go? Here's taken, here's taken, all along here's taken. This pawn is two moves away from the promotion. The queen has to stay there. This knight is stopped by its outpost square on c4. This rook, it hasn't moved since the start of the game. This pawn is blocked. This pawn is blocked. There's no hope. And now queen to g5. Um, but after the move queen to h5, it sort of gets a little bit desperate. Because obviously queen to f7 is coming, followed by queen to f8, which is mate. Um, so basically what that means is short had to trade off the queens. He had to trade off the queens. And now knight takes h5. Rook up to a6. Now, just just, just go back. Take a look at this position for one second. How, now that the queens have been traded off, it all becomes clear. How is Short going to develop his pieces? Firstly, let's talk about this. This pawn. This is the only good piece that Short has on the entire board. Now, this pawn. And it's just being attacked by this bishop. It's undefended. All of these pieces are disconnected. There's no way he's going to be able to support an attack with this pawn down to d1. Because there's absolutely no way. Because none of these pieces can even get to it. Firstly, okay, let's have a look at this bishop. This bishop is blocking the rook from developing. The only square it can go to is d7 because it's blocked in by the pawn, which is blocked in by the knight. Um, so this bishop is completely stuck. Because that bishop is stuck, it means the rook is also stuck. And because the knight can't... Uh, develop to c4 or to d5 or to d7 it means the knight has to go to c8 so they're all blocking each other effectively this rook can't get out here at all everything's completely struck and well this pawn on h6 you know it's completely useless there's no way you know there's a pawn on h3 if the worst comes to the worst so yeah rook a6 this is the only way that short can even get out you know, he has to play knight to a8 to even make this rook operate. And then the knight can't even go back to c7 because this one is protected. So what's going to happen is it has to come across. This knight will have to go back to b6. And then there's no way that Shaw can even get his pieces out. Bishop takes d4 and knight back to a8. But after bishop to d5, you know, this all comes clear. And um, 
Shorts uh, lost the game. He resigned in this position, despite being up. Um, mater- he's not up material, but he's up. You know, power pieces. He's got a rook, uh, as opposed to a bishop. So yeah, that was the game between Polgar and Short. I hope you guys enjoyed looking through it. It definitely was one of my best chess games I've ever seen. Classic nineties chess footage. You can buy the footage off um, onlinechesslessons.net if you want to see this footage live. I have seen it once, but I haven't bought it on DVD. And I can't put it on YouTube because that's against um, copyright. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, please sure to um, check out my other great chess videos. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.